Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Money Podcast, your source for all things money. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Daniel Amaduri on the line, and he's co-founder over at the Future Money Trends newsletter and also author of Don't Save for Retirement, A Millennial's Guide to Financial Freedom. Uh, Daniel, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me on the show, Adam. So uh, I'm excited to get into your book and also talk a little bit more about your newsletter. Um, but before we do that, just to give the audience a little bit more about your background, how did you get started in your career and in business? You know, I'd always been fascinated with entrepreneurship uh, as young as five years old. I even got in trouble at school and stuff uh, for undercutting the teacher in uh, third grade. They were selling pencils for 10 cents. I was selling for nine. No. Uh, <laughs> fast, fast forward to um, – um, high school at 16 years old, I ended up buying uh, into a partnership and ended up owning part of a gym actually. And then at 18 years old, bought my wow. first uh, rental property. And I just always was fascinated with entrepreneurship and investing and money. And of course, you're taught that money's a bad thing, but once you realize that it's it's certainly um, it's not the end result uh, of what you're looking for, but certainly money making money is fun. And, uh, you know, using money as a tool is fun, and it can buy yourself some freedom, some real freedom. So I've always been fascinated with it and um, just kind of hit the ground running. And it ultimately led to me starting the uh, letter Future Money Trends, where I share basically everything that I'm doing. Wow, that's absolutely amazing. And uh, I can't believe you undercut the teacher. That's a great story. You're like, <laughs> you're like they're selling it for 10, I'm in for 9. That's hilarious. Um, and I think that's a great transition, too. Let's get into uh, – let's go a little bit further into the newsletter. So tell us a little bit more about what people can expect. You know, the book, Don't Say it for Retirement, is it starts from when my wife and I uh, kind of – we just basically had to hit reset after the 2008-2009 financial crisis. Uh, we were literally in a bankruptcy attorney's office. Uh, we didn't file bankruptcy, but we ended up just kind of clearing everything. We had to save money in extreme and odd ways. You know, if you Google how to save money, it's like, oh, transfer your credit card and, you know, switch your bank account uh, or stop drinking coffee. I was like, man, I need to know how to really save some money. And so um, we did crazy things to save money. We did crazy things to make money. Um, we squatted in houses. Uh, we uh, started buying uh, our investment strategy all changed. Instead of speculating and focusing on appreciation, we only bought things um, that would mail us a check or ACHS a deposit. And it was just kind of a transformation of our, of, of our way of thinking. And mm. it was something that I really put together for my children – and ultimately became something that we wanted to share with everybody. And so that's what, that's what the book Don't Save for Retirement is. It's not don't save. It's just there's an alternative to saving for conventional retirement. No, I love it. And um, we're not going to have time to go into all of these, of course. But and for the listeners, definitely, it's, it's really easy to find this book. I just went into, you go onto Amazon and type in uh, Daniel Amaduri. It comes right up. Um, but I do want to touch on a couple of different, a uh, couple things I see here. So let's start off with um, just the beginning. So the concept of wealth. Tell us a little bit more about that chapter. Yeah, you know, so um, – your listeners, if they go to futuremoneytrends.com slash save, you can read the intro, which is a very personal story, as well as my own personal definition of wealth. And ultimately, wealth to me became control of my time. And it be, mm. it, uh, my ability to do what I want to do in the morning. You know, one of the funny things is, is people ask me, what's the best thing about being wealthy on some of these interviews? And they're always surprised. My answer is, well, I like waking up when I'm done sleeping. Sometimes it's the little things. It's not that I can buy certain things or enjoy certain luxuries. You know, when it comes down to it, I want my freedom. And I think everybody listening to this can connect with that, that you want your freedom. You want the ability to pursue your love and your passions, to be able to spend time with the people you want to spend time with. And when we really kind of evaluate our life and a lot of times chasing materialism or, or, or working physically too many hours, we're not really getting what we want in life, even though – People could look on the outside and say, wow, that guy's really wealthy. He's got a nice car, a nice house. But what did it cost him? 
Does he have a good relationship with his children? Does he have a passionate marriage? Uh, does he have the ability to say, you know what, I don't feel like doing anything today. I think I'm just going to go to the beach and meditate and maybe take the kids to the, to the, to the pool or, or to, the, to the ocean. And to me, so that's the difference between real wealth and just this uh, typical focus on financial wealth because there is a big difference. People who have a lot of money aren't necessarily wealthy in my opinion. Let's uh so I I noticed something right here in the book so the freelance economy I mean right now you know a lot of more people are looking towards the gig economy what that means um tell us a little bit more about that chapter so the freelance economy You know this book was really directed towards my fellow millennials um it, it, anybody can read it but really I just wanted to reach out to those millennials who have have been struggling some of them and, and a lot of them have the, uh, the excuse of, hey, we've got it different than our parents, or we've got it worse than our, our, the baby boomers. It's true you have it different, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. Um, now, if you take what the baby boomers used in their life, that blueprint, and apply it to yours, you're going to fail and you're going to have trouble. But, but that's because you're taking a 1980s portfolio or a 1980s job career model and trying to apply it to the 2020s. Now, if you take what you have in front of you with the freelance economy, the opportunities are better than ever. First of all, you can start a business for $10. You can monetize your own job. You don't necessarily have to work for any one employer anymore. You can make them your client. Uh, and that's what my point was, and that we, that's what I discussed in that chapter, that focus on all the amazing opportunities. In fact, you don't even have to own a car nowadays, and you could still be a driver for somebody. Not that that's what you want to do, but... My point is you don't even have to own things anymore in this economy. And, again, there are so many unbelievable opportunities to the millennials that embrace the technology and the social media. I mean, you know, people can start a podcast and start generating revenue. It's going to take a lot of work, but that opportunity wasn't, uh, you know, available. Look at my own letter, Future Money Trends. I would have had to have mailed out and had a system to get to reach 150,000 people in 1980s, 1990s with physical paper and postage. Today, all I have to do is hit send, and it doesn't really cost much relative to the size of the, the amount of people I'm, I'm sending this out to. Man, that's awesome. I love it. And uh, let's, uh, let's get a little bit further into the newsletter. So tell us more about that. You know, the letter started out uh, in 2010, and it was really my wife and I just kind of tracking what we were doing and what we were learning and sharing. And it mm. simply had an advertised-based business model, uh, and it was a passion, but more of a hobby. Ultimately, it turns into a business when we started investing in some venture capital uh, deals where we're helping companies that are close to going public go public. And we started doing it with our subscribers. So I would travel all over looking at different cannabis companies, uh, or blockchain companies, or nowadays we're really focused on the mining sector. So, you know, it depends on what sector we think is going to do well or going to be needed in a, in a trend. Uh, we try to invest in those companies. So that's 10% of the letter. The other 90% of the letter and most of the content you'll receive is still back to that core and fundamentals of basic wealth building and the different things that my wife and I did and applied in our own life to build financial wealth. Man, that's awesome. I love it. Um, and uh, so, Daniel, that being said, um, we're about out of time for this episode. If somebody wants to subscribe to the newsletter or to pick up your book, I mean, what's the best way for them to keep up and to connect with your brand and what you're building? If you go to futuremoneytrends.com slash save, you can read the intro of the book, check out the first chapter, and that will also opt you into our free weekly wealth digest where each week not only do we update you on the things we've been doing, uh, but we update you on the things that we're about to do, uh, different investment ideas that we're looking at right now. Fantastic. Well, hey, Daniel, it's been awesome having you on the show today. Um, thank you for telling us more about your background, um, your book, and also, of course, that newsletter. Let's, uh, let's leave that website again. What's the website again? FutureMoneyTrends.com slash save.
Fantastic. And uh, to the listeners, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes Store. If you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Money, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments in the comment section. I mean, love to know what kind of things and projects you're working on. And uh, Daniel, thanks again for coming on the show.